We all had a walk at the beach. Try to remember the last time you walked alone at the beach, searching for the most unusual, the most shining, the most beautiful sea pebbles on your way. You filled up your handfuls with them and felt nice. Some of you felt them as a present from the sea and Mother Nature. Some others probably brought them home, washed them, and kept them in a nice place to see them and recall the memory of that beautiful day on the beach. Now please have a look at all these portraits. These are people from different countries and different cultures. They have different ages, different beliefs, different disciplines, and different languages. What connects them all is the way they live their lives. They live their lives on the edge. These are my shining pebbles, the unusual ones who through their lives, unique energy and great achievements, they inspire me and hopefully the rest of you. The Known Unknown project of mine started in 2014 as a casual chat with a friend. I was going to travel to Athens and this friend of mine told me, since you will be in Athens and you are good in taking portraits, why don't you find a way and contact the poet, Katerina angelaki Ruk, and see if she's okay with you to take a portrait? The practicalities are irrelevant. What I can tell you, though, is that I came back from Athens with her portrait, which we both loved. Inside me, I also carried the colors of her soul's palette. This personal contact with her was very intriguing. I was sitting and chatting with one of the biggest living poets of Greece, and that was unreal. The acquaintance with Rook was the first seed which was planted inside me and made me want to meet more people like her and take their portrait. It felt like I wanted to throw the headlight on them so that the whole world could see them. It felt like they were in the dark, for most of us, and I wanted to light them up and notify their existence to everybody. This project started without any plan or organization, but it turned out to be a life's work. It became a search for people who pushed their limits and devoted themselves to what they do best quietly and responsibly to make their wonderful dreams a reality. I had the pleasure to search for them, to contact them, to travel to them, to meet them in person, to connect with them soul to soul, and at the end, to freeze their shine in a portrait with my camera. Since 2014, I have traveled to 35 countries in four continents, and I pushed my own limits to the edge for this project as it was a one-man show. The way I decided to take the portraits had very much to do with the idea of the project. I filled the canvas with the whole face, making it more intimate, giving a special emphasis to the eyes. The eyes are the windows to the soul, and I wanted the eyes, the lines, the wrinkles, the shadows of light on every curve to tell me the story behind each face so that I could pass it on to you. There wouldn't be enough time today to talk about all 40 people I have photographed for this project until now, but I have chosen seven to share with you today. Annette Warren. She's a singer and a song stylist known for dubbing the singing of famous stars of Hollywood in the 50s, like Ava Gardner and Lucille Ball. The connection between me and Annette Warren was made by a friend, so I traveled to Los Angeles in December 2016 to meet her. We arranged to meet at her place on Christmas Day early in the morning. She lives in a beautiful area in southwest Los Angeles, and I went there by taxi. Her house, an open plan space, bright and luminous, with a great view of the ocean. 
She was writing kindness and joy. We went in, we sat at the piano room, and she started telling me stories of her performances, of her late husband, who was a great jazz musician, and of Hollywood. At the moment, during the photo shooting, she closed her eyes, and I thought, this is exactly how I want the portrait of a musician to be. Closed eyes, like listening to the music. Our regular, one of the biggest photojournalists of the 20th century, known as the Eye of Istanbul, for his iconic black and white photos he took of the city and its people in the 50s. Aragüler photographed some of the most prominent politicians and artists in the 70s, like P Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Maria Callas, Alfred Hitchcock, Indira Gandhi, Winsor Churchill, and many more. We met in December 2014 at his coffee shop, the Arak Cafe, in the Pera area of Istanbul. It was a rainy day and pretty dark, so I arrived there 30 minutes earlier to find a table with good light so that I could be good for my photo shooting. Of course, when he arrived, he changed all my plans because he wanted us to move to the back of the space, which was more quiet, but at the same time, darker. He even made fun of me. He said, since you are a good photographer, you will find a way to take my portrait even with less light. He was a person full of stories. He told me that when he found out that Maria Callas was arriving to Istanbul on the yacht of Aristotle Onassis, he rented a boat, he went all the way to the yacht, he reached the stern and with his left hand, holding his whole body up, he was trying to take the portrait with his right hand with his camera when Maria Callas saw him. And she told him, since you are here, why don't you come up and take a picture of all of us? This is something that he eventually did. Christian Emil Cabral. He was the first, he was a heart surgeon and a pioneer of artificial heart transplantation. He performed the first heart transplantation in Europe and the second in the world in April 1968. We met in January 2017. I had to travel from London to go to Paris with the Eurostar to meet him, and I had a very busy schedule myself because I needed to be back in London the very same day. His wife, Mrs. Berenger, was waiting for me at the door. We went in, we sat, she made tea, and then the nurse brought the professor in a wheel, on a wheelchair. He was tall because he could barely fit on that wheelchair. I will never forget his kind smile and his big hands and fingers, which I included in the portrait. Seeing his hands, I was thinking how many lives these hands have saved in all the years of operating. Elena Poniatowska, a Mexican journalist and author, specialized on human rights issues defending the socially disadvantaged groups, mainly women and the poor in Mexico. Through her writings, she became, so to say, the advocate for those she believes they have no voice in the Mexican society. She is considered to be Mexico's grand dame of letters. We met in February 2015 in Mexico City with the mediation of the Cyprus Embassy. She had a very busy schedule and she told me that I should go at her place as early as possible. So I was there at eight o'clock in the morning. Her maid opened the door I went in and I sat at a space which was full of bookshelves and books from floor to ceiling. Elena arrived and she was at the beginning reserved and stressed. She wanted to know more about my project. She said many questions which I answered and then slowly, slowly, the ice broke it between us and with her first smile, 
we started the photo shooting, which was the shortest of all the 40 photo shoots I had for my project. Jock Lowe, the first chief pilot of the Concorde and the world's most experienced supersonic pilot. He has flown over 1,700 trips with the Concorde, and rightfully so, he was given the nickname Mr. Concorde. While a pilot, he flew Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Diana, and many more royals from and to London. After his retirement, he became a chairman of the environmental group Greener by Design, a company seeking solutions for a greener aviation. We met in London in April 2016 in the Harley Street Dental Clinic. Dr. Stanley Kay, the owner of the clinic, was a common friend of us, and he made the connection. We sat at the waiting room of the clinic at the lunch break, and he started telling us stories of the Concorde, of incidences that happened on board while he was a pilot, and how many VIPs he flew from and to London. He was a very proud and a very straightforward man with these intense blue eyes. We started the photo shooting, and in a gracious way at the moment, he looked up the ceiling as if he was watching up the sky. This is where I took his best portrait. Martin Strell, a legendary marathon swimmer known as the Big Riverman, he swam the length of the longest and most polluted rivers of the planet, like the Danube, the Mississippi River, the Amazon, and the Wangzi in China. In 2007, he swam along the Amazon in 66 days, covering 5,268 kilometers, putting himself in great dangers from the piranhas and the uh, pirates and the venomous snakes. His motto is swimming for peace and clean waters. We met at my hotel in Ljubljana in August 2015 when I was traveling there with my family. The reason I wanted us to meet there is that we had a swimming pool and I wanted the portrait of this legendary swimmer who spent most of his life in water to be wet. We connected at once. He was a person full of life, full of stories, and full of spirit. He even took off his T-shirt to show us his scars on his back. Do you see all these scars, he told us? These are stitches from the piranhas. They have been beaten me in the Amazon. Then we moved to the swimming pool, where no losing more time he jumped in the water, shouting, in the water, I feel at home. Yuko Asakusa. At the time we met, she was the oldest and most respected active geisha of Japan. She became a geisha at the age of 16, and she was playing the traditional Japanese instrument, shamisen, singing and dancing for the VIPs for over 75 years. At a later stage in her life, she became a great mentor for the younger geishas. It was not easy to get to her, so I asked help from the Cyprus Embassy in Tokyo. They found her, and she was very positive to get photographed by me for the project. I traveled to Tokyo in November 2017 to meet her. We arranged to meet her at the Asakusa area at her place, and I went there with two representatives from the Cyprus embassy who spoke Japanese and they could help us with the communication. She was waiting at the door. She bowed to us. She was this tiny, little, kind lady with this beautifully smiling face. We went up a floor. She made tea for us. And then she played for us the shamisen, and she sang. After the photo shooting, she wanted to show us a neighborhood, so we moved at the Asakusa area in the small alleys where we walked and where everybody was bowing to her out of respect. 
It all started eight years ago with the first click of my camera in Athens. And I never anticipated just into how much thought and into which depths this first click of my camera would take me. I never realized what would be awakened within me in this process of finding and meeting these bright beacons of humanity. I met surgeons, artists, poets, philosophers, architects, photographers, astronauts, shamans, fighters of life, who without fanfare, they won their own battles, blessing us all with their example. Throughout this journey, I felt the things that unite us with a greater intensity over the ones that separate us. I felt that it is through our truth that we achieve success, and this is the only real guidance for these great people around us. This journey made me feel a brotherhood uniting us all, like we all live in the same neighborhood, like we all started the journey of life from the same egg. And I wonder how many thousands, how many millions of beacons await to shine their light on the gray of our everydayness. How many more beacons share a light that will never reach us because we are not aware of their existence? Thank you.